What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're gonna throw some Marcosini wheels off of a Panigale V4R onto the 2021 Panigale V2. I was able to find these wheels uh, on eBay. They were takeoffs. I don't recall the year V4R they came off of, but uh, but these are the Forge Marcosini wheels. Sometimes you'll see them on uh, Street Fighter V4S's, the Panigale V4S, V4R, et cetera. Same wheels. Uh, rear tire is a little bit wider. It's a 200 rear tire. Panigale V2s come with 180 rear tires. Uh, Panigale V2s and the base Panigale V4 uh, also come with, uh, the wheels are actually cast. So we're going to a forged wheel, a little bit lighter, um, way better looking. I never liked the way the, uh, the base V4 and V2 wheels look. I always thought they were kind of a, almost like a Japanese bike looking wheel. So this will be a nice upgrade. All right, and here they are. So nothing too crazy. You guys have seen these before. Again, they're just off of a V4R. They're in super clean condition. You're supposed to only have about a thousand miles on them, but you know, who knows, right? There's no way to really confirm that, but uh, condition wise, they look super clean. Uh, decals are in good shape and everything. So we'll go ahead and weigh them uh, in comparison to the old wheels and uh, get them on there. All right, and first up is the front wheel. Looks like I'm getting 16 pounds, four ounces or so. Uh, the tire is used, so just keep that in mind. It's gonna be slightly lighter than a brand, brand new tire, but just at close inspection, you could see that the D, the Diablo is still there. So. Obviously, it's, uh, it hasn't been worn down much, but it is a used tire, just FYI. And again, 16 pounds, four ounces. Okay, now we've got our rear tire wheel. And it's hard to get an exact reading just because of the way it's on the scale, but looks like we're at about 23 pounds, 13 ounces, give or take. Again, it is a used tire. This is a 200 rear tire, so keep that in mind. It's, it's a wider tire than what I'm taking off. It's a 260. Uh, ZR17, so a little bit wider than the 180 that's on there, but um, we're gonna compare and see if we get any weight savings here by going to this rear okay, wheel. So to remove the rear wheel, obviously it needs to be on a stand. It being a single side swing arm makes it makes this job a lot easier, but you can go ahead and get it on a stand. And on these bikes, we need to uh, remove this lock ring here. I'm just gonna use this pick here to remove that ring, pretty self-explanatory. And the next step is to go ahead and remove this nut here, this kind of center lock nut. Uh, I'm just running the, the stock nut, really no need to, it's nothing special, no need to really tape it up, but I just didn't want my uh, center lock all marred up, so I chose to put a little painter's tape on it. You'll need one of these guys. Uh, you'll find these all over online. It's the same one for a 1299 V4, V2. Pretty self-explanatory. It'll the outer one is obviously for the rear wheel, and this inner one is for the uh, the front axle. Okay, and luckily for me, I got a half-inch Milwaukee Impact gun. Went ahead and got it right off. So as you can see, you don't necessarily need to use an impact gun, but it makes the job a, a little bit easier. Okay, once you get that nut off, then the wheel is ready to come off. So as you can see, easy as that. And here's the old wheel next to the new one. As you can see, I just, it's not the, the worst looking wheel ever, but it's kind of kind of Japanese bike looking. And I, I believe these are NK wheels, so it kind of makes sense, but I just never really liked the way that they looked. I think these look much better, fit the bike much, much better style-wise. And I'm, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be lighter as well, despite being wider. Here we got the stock wheel on, stock rear wheel on the scale, and we're at 24 pounds, 11 ounces or so. Uh, I would say that the tire wear is pretty close to what the the new tire is. Um, I would say that they're pretty pretty equivalent, but yeah, so it looks like we're about two pounds lighter despite the new wheel being wider and the, the new tire being wider as well. Since the wheel's off, I went ahead and took the opportunity to kind of clean the inside of the Swing arm, it wasn't super dirty, but went ahead and cleaned it anyway. Same goes with the brake caliper, anything that's gonna be a little bit hard to clean with the wheel on. And uh, wiped off the old grease, put a little bit of Lucas Red and Tacky on there. It's just a, 
Just a, a high temp wheel bearing grease, kind of a general purpose grease. You don't need a lot, but just a little coating uh, is really all that you need there. Once you get the wheel mounted, again, just put a little bit of all purpose grease in there. They even make specific motorcycle axle grease, but uh, e either way is fine. Don't forget your the centering cone. I don't know the actual uh, technical name for it, but it basically centers the, the wheel for you. Don't forget that. Make sure it's nice and clean. Again, I put a little bit of grease on it, not much, just to keep it from seizing. And on these bikes, there's also this little spacer as well, if I can grab it. Don't forget this as well. It's like a really, really thin washer. I'm gonna clean it a little bit better and uh, put a little bit of grease on it. All right, and there's the rear wheel installed. Just so you guys know, the torque spec on the rear wheel, uh, Ducati recommends 230 newton meters of torque, which is about 176 foot pounds. Uh, I know that there's some discussion online about that number. Some people say more, some people say less. Uh, do, do whatever you want. I'm just going off of what Ducati recommends, which is 230 newton meters. And just so you guys know, at that particular torque spec, it is possible that once you tighten this nut down to whatever torque spec it is that you're going to use, uh, it's possible that the uh, lock ring holes will not line up to where they need to be. So you may need to go a little bit tighter than, uh, than the actual spec, just FYI. Luckily for me, mine lined up perfectly, didn't have to go tighter than the 176 foot pounds. The way I did it was I went ahead and uh, put my foot on the, the rear brake, held the rear brake, and then tighten down to torque spec. And there we have it. For the front wheel here, kind of same deal as the rear. Just gonna take the same tool. I'm gonna use my rattle gun or impact gun and uh, just loosen the nut. Okay, and once you get that axle nut off, don't forget you have to loosen your pinch bolts, which are these two here. Those are six millimeter FYI. Remove your caliper bolts. These are eight millimeter. Don't forget about the little spacers or if you're still running that reflector, don't forget about that. But yeah, eight millimeter and then six millimeter for your pinch bolts. Okay, once you get all your calipers off, get your uh, axle nut loose, get your pinch bolts loose on both sides. Um, I've seen some people, they will stick like a socket in the, in the axle or something like that and then hit it. Uh, I don't know if that's the best idea. I think the best thing to do is Put the axle nut back on just with a few threads. Just take a mallet and it'll 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 move right away. See that? All right, it doesn't take much. It should if everything's loose, it should not take much effort at all. Okay, and once you pull the axle, the wheel's basically gonna just come out. So on mine, I needed a little bit more clearance, so I had to loosen the front fender as well. But again, pretty simple. This is what the axle looks like. Just pull the axle and the wheel will just come down. Uh, when you're removing it, make sure that uh, you're careful. The brake calipers don't hit the wheel or anything like that. But other than that, really straightforward. Okay, now it's time to remove the brake rotor. Uh, pretty easy. This is These are just T40s. I use an impact gun. You don't have to. It's just a little bit easier. If all you have is a 3H ratchet, breaker bar, that, that'll work as well. But um, so is mandatory. One, two, three, four, five. Take your T40 off. Just lift the the brake rotor off the old wheel put it onto the new one however make sure that you're putting make sure that the wheel is going in the same direction so basically make sure that you keep the right rotor on the right side left rotor on the left side make sure that you do that here we have our old wheel and we're at 18 pounds, seven ounces for the old wheel and tire. And it's the next day. I went ahead and uh, took a little break last night. Started getting a little bit tired, started getting a little bit, uh, not really frustrated, just getting a little bit fatigued and uh, I didn't want to make any mistakes. So uh, here we are again. Um, so as you can see, I uh, made a little bit of a calculation error in the beginning of the video. The rear wheel, uh, the Marcassini wheel is 23 pounds, 13 ounces or so. Uh, the factory cast wheel is 24 pounds, 11 ounces. So uh, we see it's about a, a one pound weight savings in the rear. Again, that is with a wider wheel and a larger tire. So the wheel itself is probably 
the Marcassini wheel itself is probably much lighter than uh, the factory cast wheel, but we gained some of that back with the tire. Um, but regardless, still a net, you know, about one pound saving in the rear. Uh, the front Marcassini wheel was 16 pounds, 14 ounces, and the front cast wheel was 18 pounds, seven ounces. So we have about a one and a half pound difference in the front, meaning, you know, net, we saved about two to, to two and a half pounds of rotational mass, which again is, is pretty good considering we went up uh, in, in rear tire size. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go over some torque specs with you. Um, and then that should conclude the video. Now it's time to assemble the brake rotors onto the wheel. Again, make sure that you have the, uh, so one rotor is gonna have this reluctor wheel that goes on the left side of the bike. So as you're sitting on the bike, it would be on your left. And the other rotor, which does not have that reluctor wheel, will be on the right. Um, you, are you are supposed to tighten these in a star pattern, so just remember that. And the torque spec on these is, uh, is 30 Newton meters. So again, just take your time, make sure you have the right rotor, make sure you tighten it in a star pattern, and make sure that's 30 Newton meters. Um, on mine, I actually chase the, uh, the fasteners and the... I actually chase the threads with a tap and die. You probably don't need to do that, but uh, man, they use so much thread locker on these fasteners that I didn't want to risk damaging the thread. So I went ahead and chased it with a, it's an M8 by 1.25. And obviously when you reinstall them, go ahead and use your favorite thread lock. I know a lot of folks like Loctite. I don't, I think Vibratite is much, is a much, much better product. Um, you know, Loctite, it's very brittle. It's just, I, I, I'm just never really been a fan of it. Maybe for things on your house and stuff like that. But uh, anything motorsport related, I've always liked Vibratite much better. But, uh, uh, and it's going to be the, the blue one. So I think Vibratite, it's, uh, let me see what one it is. It's going to be, it'd be this one, Vibratite 125. But uh, again, that's just what I do. You folks do what you want. But um, let's go ahead and get this together. There we go, front end all assembled. Just to go over the torque specs real quick. So your caliper bolts, those are going to be 33 foot pounds. Uh, your six millimeter pinch bolts under there, those are supposed to be nine Newton meters. Uh, but in the US, you're probably a lot more likely to have an inch pound torque wrench. In that case, it's 72 inch pounds. So be really careful, not foot pounds, inch pounds. Be really careful with those. Uh, those pinch bolts there, they're really small and easy to snap. Your axle nut, that is 46 foot pounds. Uh, what I like to do is tighten the pinch bolts on the right side of the bike, then go ahead and, uh, and torque the axle nut, and then go ahead and, and after the axle nut's torqued, then go ahead and torque the pinch bolts on the, on the left side as well. Um, just one more quick thing too. I like putting a little bit of anti-seize on the caliper bolts, just something that I do. If you don't want to do that or have something better that you want to use, fine. But that is just what, uh, what I like to do. So yeah, I mean, overall, uh, not too bad of an install. You are probably going to need a half, a half inch drive torque wrench for the rear axle nut. You'll probably need a three H drive for the front axle nut. And then you'll either need a, a quarter inch drive torque wrench or a three inch drive uh, inch pound torque wrench for the uh, for the pinch bolts. Um, caliper bolts, again, probably going to be a three eighths drive torque wrench. So you don't need a, a, a ton of um, different tools, but there are some things that you do need. But um, yeah, there we go. So it's all together. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a that's a much, much better look compared to what was on there before, which these are fine. Uh, just as suspected, these are actually NKs, and I know I saw it somewhere, yeah, right there. We can see that these are NK wheels. So by going to the Marcassinis, um, better aesthetic, you do lose some weight, both front and back, and you get to go with a uh, bigger rear tire, but um, yeah, so there it is all together. One more thing as well, um, after you ride it a few times, I would go ahead and torque everything again. Just check it once more, especially your uh, your brake rotor fasteners. You could actually torque it on the bike. You can see here, you can get to that one easily and just keep rotating it 
um, until you get to all five on, on both sides. And there we go, guys. So that is how to put uh, OEM Marcassini wheels on a Panigale V2. You can get them off of a, a V4R, V4S. Uh, some of the Street Fighters have them as well, but they are a direct fit, no big deal. Um, they're still relatively expensive when you find them used, but it's still cheaper than a carbon option, a magnesium option, be way, way cheaper. A um, little bit better durability for, for street use. You have to worry about them a little bit less and you get a, a nice little weight savings, but again, mostly uh, a, a much nicer aesthetic. I think it, it fits the bike a lot better. Um, and it's it's something that, that most people that own these bikes can probably afford. It's not outrageously expensive and it's something that you can handle at home with. Uh, you do need uh, certain tools like you're gonna need uh, a lot of these, right, the various torque wrenches I mentioned earlier, the axle nut tool, a nice set of, uh, of Allen bits, and so forth, and I see thread locker. So there are some things that you'll need, but uh, if you do most of your own maintenance, you'll probably have almost all those things, uh, if not most of them. So uh, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys like the video. Hope this video helps somebody out there. Hope the uh, torque specs uh, that I provided save somebody from having to scour the internet and have to read through all the forum arguments about torque specs um, online. So uh, anyways, guys, please like and subscribe if you like what you see, and I'll see you guys next time.